So we are recording. All right. Um, all right. Well, sorry for the late notice. Um, um, <clears throat> I hope everybody can uh, is is able to see um, and have, has a good can others, Henry. But I did not want to um, travel on those roads. There it is, Henry. Welcome, Henry. We just got started, so you didn't miss anything. Um, somebody needs to, oh, there's another one, Peyton. Oh, come on. Peyton Brown, who's Peyton Brown? Oh, not Annie. Somebody needs to mute. I think it might be you, Maddie. I muted you, don't worry. All right. Annie, are you there? Can you hear me? Yes, I'm here. Good. Um, we just got started, so you didn't miss anything. Okay, sounds good, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, let's get started for, finally. Um, so today we're going to talk about the, made, the first major assignment, the interpretation essay. And um, we'll have a little exercise to hopefully get you prepared for the interpretation essay. Um, we're going to watch a scene from one of the films, maybe, uh, and I'll probably show you a small snippet from uh, Picnic at Hanging Rock. Um, but um, I gr did grade the, the, the diagnostic essays. Everybody's in the right place, so uh, no need to worry about that. Um, you show, you, you've shown me that you can write an essay, so I expect good results. Um, if I see, you know, so I mean, obviously you wanna proofread your essays uh, fairly thoroughly. I know I said that to some of you in my comments, so you can, you can actually go, go uh, look at the comments um, on your essay. Um, but most of, most of these mistakes that I saw were not uh, egregious, so you should be able to um, um, write a fairly decent essay, if not a very good essay. Um, and um, I've noted that on some of your essays that you might want to, to, to attend the writing center to get help there. Uh, I said proofreading, you know, but you know, they'll help you to identify the mistakes in your essay, but they won't proofread them for you. They won't, uh, you know, correct those mistakes for you, but they'll tell you that you're making mistakes, let's say in run-ons or fragments or spelling mistakes uh, or the use of commas. So um, yeah, with, with these major essay assignments, you want to take you want to give yourself more time to work on them than you did for the diagnostic essay. So you, yeah, like I said, you have proven you can write a, a fairly decent essay. So I expect good work for these major assignments. So good work, folks. Um, any questions before I get started? No, all right. Um, this document here, um, the interpretation for the, the interpretation essay, can be found in content. And in essay assignments, and it's right there, the interpretation essay. So you can access that document and download it and print it out if you want to. And this is, uh, this is it here. So the main purpose of the interpretation essay um, is to interpret a thematic issue in one of these three films, Walk About, Picnic at Hanging Rock, or a ghost story. I provide you with three links. Um, so you want to go to links to films here in content. Actually, I provide you with two links to Picnic Hang Rock. I think this one's actually, let me make sure. I think that one's been taken down. It wasn't a great version anyway. No, oh, that should be there. Yeah, it's unavailable, um, but that one is available. Stop. Um, in Amazon Prime, you have to rent it. Um, that's I think is the only one you have to rent. This one still works because um, I just accessed it, and as far as I know, it's yep, it's still there. So you can watch the film on YouTube for free, obviously, and then the final one is a ghost story and that's available at Netflix. <coughs> Nowadays, most people have a Netflix account, so I'm assuming you have access to it. 
and it's available. Oh, sorry, maybe it's gone. Let me make sure. They could have changed the connect the link to it, but go to Netflix, see if it's available. What's this about, sir? This is Colonel Mingis from MI6. Colonel? Why is it really? lighting? Oh, there we go. I believe the name. Well, it looks like it's not available anymore. Uh, I'll see if I can find, uh, find you access to it. Um, I'm sure it's available on Prime, Amazon Prime. But I'll change those links. They just must have taken it down this this um, in January. Okay. So, all right. Well, I'll, I'll make sure to provide uh, the the correct links here to those films. Uh, but at least you have access to one that's free. <clears throat> um, and it's a good film. I think you'll like it if you decide to focus on Walkabout. Um, so choose one of those three films. You can watch all three of them if you want, but you only focus on one of them for this essay and. Um, you want to identify a major theme in the essay and interpret that theme for your uh, for your reader. So you have to find evidence within the film that would support your interpretation. Um, and you know um, sometimes these things don't get explicitly stated. Uh, sometimes they do, and in which in which case I would probably argue it's probably not a great film if it's explicitly stated the themes, um, because films tend to be. I mean, it's obviously a visual format. So you have to digest several aspects of filmmaking, um, not just plot but and, and dialogue, but things like um, framing and composition, camera angles, lighting, uh, symbolism within the film. Um, you have to be able to identify those uh, moments in the film. And that's what we're gonna do as, as part of the exercise today to get you started, hopefully uh, get you started in the right direction for this, for this particular essay. So you have to be able to identify those moments within the film in order to support your interpretation. Um, and all three of these films are very uh, heavily visual. Uh, they rely on the, on, on the visuals to tell most of the story. Um, there is dialogue, but um, like I said, a lot of it is, is relies on the visual, which films should uh, do. They should rely on, on, on visuals as much as possible. Um, so here are some possible themes in Walkabout and Picnic and Hanging Rock. I didn't, I don't have, I didn't want to take up too much room for a ghost story. But um, I, I list four here. These are all possible themes you can focus on. Um, doesn't matter which one you choose. There's no right answer. I tend to think that Walkabout, for example, is about uh, our relationship or disconnect with the natural world. Um, whereas somebody like Roger Ebert, the famed uh, movie reviewer, movie critic, he and I provide a link to his essay in the films uh, film link uh, folder. Um, his essay about Walkabout is focuses on the theme of miscommunication. Um, <coughs> but you can also uh, definitely say that the, one of the major themes in there is the is a fall from innocence, um, and it's a rite of passage or coming of age story as well. Walkabout is essentially a rite of passage for Aboriginal boys in, in their culture. Um, but you could also argue that the brother and sister in this film uh, are going through a rite of passage. And I guess I should tell you a little bit about each film um, so that you have a basic idea of what they're about. Uh, Walkabout is a film that came out in 19, I think I mentioned this early in the semester, but I'll repeat myself. Uh, Walkabout is, a, is an Australian film that came out in 1971. And um, it's uh, about a brother and sister who get stranded in the Australian outback, a very inhospitable place, um, very difficult to survive if you're not familiar with that environment, which these kids aren't. Uh, but they get stranded out there for a reason I won't tell you because it'll spoil part of the film. Um, but when they're on the brink of, uh, of death, of, um, um, they are saved by a, an Aboriginal boy on his walkabout. And he then, then leads them to uh, safety or civilization. And that's just the basic storyline. There's a lot more to it than just that. Um, and like I said, a lot of it is told through the visuals um, and you can find a lot of evidence to support any of these four themes. Um, Picnic at Hanging Rock is another Australian film came out in 1975 and it's about um, 
these girls at a boarding school who go to a picnic at a place called Hanging Rock in Australia. And during that picnic, um, three girls disappear. Um, and one of one, only one of them is found, but she doesn't remember what happened to herself, to her, to her or the other, the other two girls, but the other two girls are never found. And uh, so it is a mystery without a resolution. Um, but that's, that's done on purpose because the filmmaker, Peter Weir, doesn't want you to focus on, um, necessarily focus on uh, the fact that there's going to be a resolution to this. He wants you to focus on the major themes. That, that's at least I would argue that's what he's trying to do. Um, and here are some of the possible themes in Picnic at Hanging Rock. Uh, repressed sexuality, loss of innocence, just like um, um, in Walkabout. And it also could be considered a coming of age story, but also the impermanence of time. There's a, actually a moment in there where all the clocks stop at noon, I believe, during the picnic. So, and that's never explained why. Um, so you have to kind of draw your own conclusion from those, uh, those clues. Um, and then A Ghost Story is a 2017 film um, and probably the most accessible to you, but, so you, but you'll have, it looks like you'll have to uh, rent it um, if I can find it on him. I'm pretty sure I can find it on Amazon Prime. Um, but it's about a story of a, a, um, a couple, a man and a woman, living in a house in Texas, rural Texas. And in the very beginning, the first 15 or so minutes, um, there is some minor kind of conflict between the two of them. Uh, she wants to move to a different place and he wants to stay put because he believes they have history there in the house. Um, and, um, but then he unexpectedly dies in a car accident uh, as he's pulling out of his driveway. Um, and then he comes back to haunt the house as a ghost. Um, and watches over his uh, ex-wife or ex-girlfriend uh, as she tries to move on with her life. And eventually she does. She moves out of the house and the ghost sticks around um, when other people move into the house and he's there for what seems like centuries. Um, um, and so it's about many things, I think. Um, it's about memory. It's about grief, um, time. There's a whole bunch of things that I think you can focus on in there. Um, all three are very good movies. I think you'll enjoy them, um, but it's up to you which one you want to focus on. And you don't have to stick to these themes that I've outlined here, folks. If you come up with your own, that's perfectly acceptable. Um, although you may want to run it by me to make sure you're headed in the right direction. I had a student once, for example, in for Walkabout, he wanted to focus just on the insect scenes in the film. <clears throat> and um, I didn't think you know that was possible because there are only like five, six, seven scenes in which insects appear. And I didn't see how he could make that into a major theme, but he did. I let him, I gave him the green light and he did a, a pretty good job. And in fact, I, it might be one of the sample essays. I'll have to check, um, but he did a really good job. Um, it was a very eloquent essay. Um, any questions about any of this folks so far? No, all right. Here are some words of advice. Um, however you approach the assignment, um, you do not want to write a movie review. Don't tell me whether it was good or bad, whether the acting was good, whether the, the cinematography was bad or whatever. Um, that doesn't matter to me. I don't care if you liked or disliked the movie. So don't write a review. You're focusing on a major theme. You're explaining the film to your reader. And also, you do not want to write a summary of the film's plot, a complete summary. So if you're following, in your essay, if you're following the film from beginning to end, each of the major scenes, and you're, just, you're explaining what happened, then you are writing a summary. And that's what you want to avoid. You just want to point to those specific moments, summarize them very briefly in a sentence or two, um, <clears throat> and, then, and then focus on uh, the evidence within that scene that, help, that would um, um, help you with your interpretation. Okay. Uh, these are good questions to consider in this paragraph, but to the, 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 it's the last two, I think, that are probably um, uh, the most helpful. If you can consider the film an argument, uh, what kind of argument is it making? Um, and, you know, I, I think all three of these are making an argument about uh, a specific theme in the film. Um, <laughs> You can read that stuff on your own. 
Uh, two more bits of advice uh, here. And, I, oh, and I've had to insert this recently, this, this sentence here, um, because students, when they reference the film for the first time in the essay, some, of, some students just say the film. You know, they may start off the first sentence, may say that this film is about, and you have to consider your reader, somebody who hasn't seen the film, who wants to understand what it's about, or somebody who has seen the film. Uh, let me, hold on, there's Josiah. He's still predicting. He's still connecting. <laughs> All right, there he is, Josiah. Thank, uh, welcome. Uh, we did get started, but um, there will be a recording available if you want to get the first part of the class, um, if you want to hear and see it. But we're talking about the, uh, the interpretation essay. Um, these are the three choices you have. Uh, you're essentially interpreting a major theme in, in the film. Um, and you obviously have to look beyond just like plot and dialogue and look at, at, at several elements uh, of filmmaking, like uh, framing and composition, camera angle, lighting, all of those contribute to, uh, to the storytelling. Um, and identify in two of the films possible themes that you could focus on. Um, and essentially what you're doing is, no, it's okay, Josiah, it, you, you don't have to apologize. Um, this, I, I should apologize <laughs> by making this a Zoom uh, class, so don't worry. Um, but like I said, the, the, the recording will be available to you if you want to see the first part of it, but I'm basically summarizing what I, what I already said. Um, here's some advice on what to avoid. Um, as well as questions to consider. Uh, and I was here, uh, I was just talking about this. Uh, when you first reference the film in the essay, you have to provide the title and possibly even the filmmaker if, you, if, if that's necessary. Um, so, you know, if your first sentence is, this film is about, then you're doing exactly what you shouldn't be doing. Um, always identify the film on first reference. When you, re when you refer to it after that, you can say the film because you've already identified which film you're focusing on, okay? Even if it's in your title, it doesn't matter. You still have to reference it uh, in, the, in the essay. Um, I don't expect you to come up with any uh, startling new interpretation of the film, though I would be pleased if you did. Um, so um, it, you can re rehash what other people have said about the film, just do it in your own words. Um, like I, uh, I mentioned, uh, the student who wanted to focus on insect imagery, that was a unique interpretation of the film. Um, I hadn't read anything like that before. Um, like I said, I hesitated about letting him go forward with it, but he did a good job. So I was quite happy with the results. Um, this should be at least three type double space pages and should be 40, formatted according to MLA style. The sample, I'll, I'll I'll show you the sample essay in a second. Uh, the sample MLA essay. I, um, um, I corrected the link to that. Um, the rough draft is due Thursday, February 10th in class. Uh, and the final draft is due Thursday, February 17th at 11.59 PM uh, through D2L. Oh, there's chance. chance. Um, all right. Any questions about any of this, folks? All right. Um, so again, um, let's go, go to content. You can access that document I was just going through in essay assignments, interpretation essay. Um, you can access the films here, although I have to fix the links to some of these um, because Picnic on, uh, at Hanging Rock is not available anymore on YouTube, but it is available on Amazon Prime and a ghost story is no longer available in Netflix, but I'm sure it's available in Amazon Prime, so I'll co correct those links. Uh, here is the MLA sample essay. 
that link should work now. Yes. Um, so this will give you information on how to format your essay correctly. So it's up to you to read this, but we will cover this in, in class. I don't know when. Uh, April 7th. Yeah, we'll, we'll cover it after our conferences. Um, so I just basically what I want you to do is try to do it correctly. And you should be able to do it correctly just based on this information here. Read these these. Uh, green and blue boxes, and it will provide all the information you need about um, structuring your S, uh, essay correctly, formatting your correct essay correctly. Um, so yeah, even the works cited page, if you go down to the works cited page, you have to have a works cited page for this because you're going to you're going to reference uh, the film at least that should be um, in your works cited page. But if you do do research beyond that, which I encourage you to do, if you feel like it, um, if it will help, then go ahead and read uh, other essays uh, about the films. And there's there are plenty out there. And I provide, as I said, I provide access to uh, to two Ebert essays on Picnic at Hanging Rock and Walkabout in the links to the films folder. So if you go here, there is an essay, Roger Ebert essay on Walkabout and a Roger Ebert essay on Picnic at Hanging Rock. And these are not movie reviews. Yeah, he was a critic, but he wrote um, um, essays about what he considered the greatest films of all time. And these two qualified as for him. And so he writes about it, um, not from a critic's point of view, but from, uh, I guess, a philosophical point of view. He, he tries to identify um, the major themes and, and explain the film to the reader. Um, there are sample essays right here in the sample essays folder. And there's two for a ghost story, two for walkabout, and one for picnic at Hanging Rock. So there's plenty to, 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 to look through. Um, and these vary, they're, they're, they're diverse in their approach to, to, the, to, the, to the assignment. Um, these are essays written by former students who got A's on the assignment. So if you have questions or are confused about how you should um, proceed, then I'm gonna ask you if you've seen any, read any of these essays. And if you haven't, that's gonna be my first point of reference. I said, go read these and then come back to me if you still have questions, um, because these, these are pretty good examples of what I'm looking for. And they should answer, hopefully answer your questions, okay? Um, that is it for the interpretation essay. Any questions about it? No, I can't see your faces, but I'm gonna assume your silence means you understand. Oh, if you do have questions at any time, again, you know, email me or talk to me after class. I do have 15 minutes before my next class starts, um, but talk to me after class if you, if you have, or talk, you know, ask those questions in class. Okay. Um, so we're gonna do a little, uh, a short little exercise to get you headed in the right direction with this with this assignment. Um, we're going to watch the uh, opening five, the first five minutes of Walkabout, and I want you to consider. Um, let's say, see, I identified two themes here. Um, we're going to focus on. We're going to try to find evidence to support this notion that uh, the Western world, human. I shouldn't say humankind. That's kind of. Um, that's not a, not very sensitive. Um, I, I would say the Western world's relationship or disconnect with the natural world. So this inability to like the, the the brother and sister who get stranded in the outback, they aren't able to survive in that environment because they have no connection to that environment, to the outs, to the natural world. So um, where do you see evidence of that in the first five minutes or miscommunication as well? Where do you see the possibility? of miscommunication being a major theme in this film. So we'll watch those first five minutes and then look for evidence if you can if you can find it. Um, and we'll talk about it when those when when I stop after I stop it. Uh, this is what appears in the beginning, um, but I'm gonna skip, I'm gonna go skip to the to the opening. Um, yeah, so it, it says in Australia, when an Aborigine man-child reaches 16, he is sent out into the land. 
Uh, for months, he must live from it, sleep on it, eat of its fruit and flesh, stay alive, and even if it means killing his fellow creatures. The Aborigines call it the walkabout, and this is the story of a walkabout. So you can argue that, yeah, the, the Aborigine boy who saves the, the brother and sister um, is on his walkabout, obviously, but you can also um, argue that the brother and sister are on a walkabout as well, a kind of rite of passage. But we're not going to focus on that because it doesn't appear in the first five minutes of the film. And by the way, what you're hearing is, a, is an Australian Aboriginal instrument called a didgeridoo, so it's not distorted sound that you're hearing uh, through this, your connection. Um, students had thought that was a problem in, in past semesters uh, remotely. Um, so just so you know, that is intentional, what you're hearing. That's the father. sister. to a hole in the box, through which a light is shot. The bird picks desperately at the grain in the hope of penetrating through to the light, which he mistakes for the sun. This goes on for several weeks. When it has eaten itself so full that it cannot stand or see, it is drowned in cognac. Gourmet is regarded as an exceptional vegetable. You will find vinegar is an acceptable All 
All right, that's as far as we'll go. Um, believe it or not, um, from the very beginning, uh, the director, uh, the filmmaker, Peter Weir, uh, not Peter Weir, uh, Nicholas Rowe, is establishing these major themes uh, What in, in, in some of these shots uh, that, that you've seen. Uh, it may seem like random shots, um, but if you pay close attention to, to what he's presenting to you, um, there, it is feeding into uh, major themes. Did anybody see anything? Uh, let's, let's just focus on the disconnect from the natural world. Anybody see any evidence of that in this first uh, five minutes, exactly? I noticed uh, a couple things there, like okay. um, uh, there were there was the signs like pinned up to the trees. So yeah. like even the natural areas within the city that they were in were touched by humans, you know, in some way. And um, mm -hmm. it just doesn't seem as respectful. And even in this shot right here on screen, they're choosing to swim in chlorine and the yeah. water is right next to them. Yeah, the ocean's right next to them. Good, good job. Um, yeah, good. Yeah, Danny Font uh, uh, noticed that too. Yeah, this shot very clearly establishes that major theme. Um, it's, this is obviously very intentional by the director, uh, Nicholas Rogue. Uh, he wants to, to establish that, that conflict here between the natural world and the sanitized version uh, of the Western world. Um, so, you know, this is, this is safer, this is cleaner. Um, you don't have to worry about drowning. Well, I guess you could worry about drowning in, in a pool, but um, it is a self-contained uh, environment. Um, and so there's no, there's very little danger when, when compared to, to the ocean. Um, so yeah, very intentional there. Um, yeah, this is, we create these kind of buffers, these layers between ourselves and the natural world. Um, most of you are probably sitting inside. It's cold outside, but you're warm because those uh, walls and, and, and the heating provide you with that comfort. And that's what we do. We are pre pre preoccupied with that. And, and I, I would you know, argue that the, the director is saying that this, is, this does have consequences. Um, and you notice the uh, lane, the, yeah. Uh, it's right before this, or maybe I missed it. I don't know. Yeah, here it is. He's walking through that, well, you know, the park or arboretum, and you notice the plaques on the trees right there. And that's probably, let me see if I can, providing information. I can't read those, but it's providing information about the kind of plant or tree it is, which is indicative of, um, you know, these, these people don't, don't, they're ignorant about the, even the, the plants that, um, that, that are around them. Whereas the Aboriginal boy later in the film, um, he knows everything in his environment and he knows how to make use of it uh, to survive. Um, but people in this environment, they need this information if they wanna know what kind of tree that is. So uh, any other moments that you saw, noticed, represent that disconnect from the natural world? There was one that was pretty obvious, I thought, right there. Why is that important? It's kind of a cleaned up, uh, one could argue it's like a dumbed down kind of version of hunting, gathering lifestyle. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's taken the act of killing out of our culture. Uh, yeah, killing a part of nature. Um, yeah, the Aboriginal boy, if you watch this film, when he appears, the first thing he does is actually hunt down what looks like a monitor lizard. I think it's a monitor lizard. But um, yeah, his first appearance, he's hunting and he kills the lizard and, and um, he has a lizard strapped to his belt. We later see him killing a, a kangaroo, uh, a bat, uh, several uh, fish even. Um, so he has to kill in order to survive, whereas people in this environment, most, most of them don't uh, have to bother with that. And I would argue that taking the act of killing out of any culture is, would be, would be detrimental because it, doesn't, it obviously doesn't uh, force that strong connection to, to the world around you, the natural world around you. Um, and again, this is just a buffer um, from, you know, um, it's a sanitized version. Uh, 
as you put it, Lane. Any other moments that you noticed? Uh, the brick walls, I think, uh, represent that buffer from the natural world. So we could go from this to this. Um, and um, I also think it's probably, it might be a reference to Bartleby the Scrivener. I don't know if anybody's ever read that. It's a classic short story written by Herman Melville. Um, and walls, brick walls are representative of the oppression of, of um, uh, modern society, which we get in this scene too with the father. There seems to be something wrong with him. And you'll find out in a few minutes what's wrong with him. But um, yeah, the, the, these buildings, I mean, look at that column, but he also looks up at the building. There seems to be something very oppressive about this environment to him and it has an effect. And, and you could also argue that it might, he might, might just have been fired from his job because he's so disconsolate sitting there, but he also sits on the ledge of right there. Um, he sits on a window ledge. Um, um, and, 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 he's, and the way he just sits down, it's, he just kind of slumps there. Um, so there is a hint that he might have uh, been fired. We don't know for sure. So let's, let's, let that, let's watch him sit down. Yeah. Um, what about miscommunication, the theme of miscommunication? Any moments that were, might possibly be contributing to that? In the kitchen, uh, yeah. near the end, the man who walks by kind of like hesitates or he stops, mm -hmm. like he wants to say something and hesitates and walks away. Yeah, yeah, that definitely. I think um, there's something lacking there. Um, no, no sense of warmth or, um, yeah, he, they just don't communicate. She doesn't even look at him, um, and he walks by with a drink in his hand. Um, so there, yeah, there's something, something wrong with that relationship. And that, you know, that's might be the first, uh, one of the first signs of miscommunication in the film. Any other moments? What's she doing in this scene? Anybody know what uh, they're actually doing? I don't, I don't think they do this anymore, except maybe in boarding schools. Nobody knows what they were doing? Nobody? Okay. Um, they're practicing vocal lessons, uh, breathing and vocal lessons um, in order to communicate. Um, yeah, repeating vowels A, E, and they're trying to do it correctly. Um, so they learn how to speak proper English. Um, and when you find out later, you find out later in the film that she, it's been so indoctrinated in this into this mindset of how to communicate properly and effectively that when she does meet the Aboriginal boy uh, for the first time in time, she's desperate to communicate to him that they want they, they need water, and she's speaking in English, and she has she's just so desperate. She says, "I don't have it. I don't know how how else to say it." And then her little brother steps up and imitates. He does a glug glug glug. Uh, and so he has an ability to communicate because he hasn't been as indoctrinated as his sister into his culture. Uh, so he has that ability to communicate um, somewhat effectively with the Aboriginal boy by doing the, the pantomime. Um, and so the, the Aboriginal boy helps them with water right there at the, at the where, the, where they were uh, sitting underneath an oasis. Um, and then, so yeah, she she fails to try to communicate very uh, effectively with the Aboriginal boy. But as the film progresses, the little brother um, begins to learn the Aboriginal language. And and I would argue that's because he hasn't been, uh, been as indoctrinated as as his uh, as his sister. She's you know probably like eight years older than he is. Um, so yeah, that is contributing, I think, to miscommunication. Um, so yeah, like I said, the point here is that. Even in the first five minutes, he's the, the, the filmmaker, all good filmmakers, I think, establish their themes immediately, or at least hint at them uh, immediately. Um, they don't waste um, they don't waste time or the, 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 the frame, um, um, whereas typical Hollywood films do. Um, just my opinion, but I, I, I like both, but I prefer these kinds of films. 
Um, any questions so far? All right, so whatever film you choose, there's going to be this kind of evidence in it. So it, your job is to, is to find it, look for it. Um, I would, my advice is to watch the film once and try just enjoy it. Um, but keep in, in mind a possible theme that you can focus on. And once you determine what you think that film is about, then watch it a second time or a third and a fourth time and find that evidence in the film. Um, like what we, we found in this for, in the first five minutes. Okay. Um, let me see. I wanted to show you just one. Um, this is the Criterion channel, by the way. I recommend it highly. It's a great, um, no, I'll just do a search. So this is one of, one of the other films, Picnic at Hanging Rock, and I just wanted to show you um, just a, a, a still. Um, which I think um, is contributing to this notion of loss of innocence. Let's see, come on, let's get, give it a second. There it is, there it is, right there, perfect. Um, the loss of innocence. And uh, this is the school where, um, this, this is the school that, where the, that the girls are attending. And uh, this is at the very beginning of the film. And what I love about the shot is, you know, they are out of their environment. I mean, they're, they're, they've created this environment um, that's comfortable. It's kind of similar to walkabout in a way, but I think it, it feeds into the theme of loss of innocence. They uh, have created this environment that is fake, essentially. This is the Australian Outback. This is what the Australian Outback looks like. It's very brown. Uh, there's some green, as you can see back there in the trees, but there isn't anything like this predominant, that predominant, maybe in the, in the highlands and the mountains, but not in this region here that, where they reside. And so this green and these lawns um, is about that contained world in which they live in uh, and they deny the existence of that outer world. So when they actually go to picnic at Hanging Rock, they're supposed to be, they're in their corsets, they have to wear their gloves, they can't take off their gloves until they get past the town. Um, and so they do, and they make a big celebration of it, taking their gloves off. Um, but yeah, you have this very green environment um, surrounded by this bare brown uh, environment, uh, arid environment. Um, but it's it's a it's about that preservation, um, which translates to to the girls' situation, the preservation of their innocence, their sexual innocence in particular. Um, but I would argue that it's a repression of their uh, innocent uh, of their of their sexuality, as represented by those corsets that they wear. Because so there's actually a scene. Let's see if I can find it. Another still. So you can see this is this is the outback and there's a school up there. So it pans from the, the, the actual outback to the school. No, actually I think it's a little, it's forward, yeah. And there's one of the main characters. Let's see if I can find a corset scene. It should be. Which I, I think it's a brilliant moment in the film. I think it's right after this. Oh, oh, after this. There it is. Here they are tying their corsets. They're all helping each other out. But there's something, uh, there's something repressive about you know these corsets. But there's also something sexual about the, what what they're doing. Um, so there is all that tension and conflict throughout the film. Um, but yeah, it's a brilliant film. I think you'd love it. Um, but again, it's a mystery without a solution. So don't try to resolve the mystery. I say that, but every time I watch it, I try to. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I'm not going to go through Ghost Story because I can't find it. I have to find it and, and provide a link. Any questions about any of that, folks? No? All right. Well, your task then moving forward is to watch at least one of those films. We're going to discuss Walkabout on February 1st. 
and uh, a ghost story and picnic at Hanging Rock on February 3rd. So you want to have watched um, at least one of those films um, before those classes. And I'll just um, let you know that if you decide to focus on walkabout, you'd, you'd be excused for the class on February 3rd. If you know you're going to watch uh, write about walkabout, there would be no point unless you want to participate in the discussion of a ghost story and picnic at Hanging Rock. But you'd be excused for that day. And if you're going to focus on a ghost story, then you can be excused for February 1st when we discuss a walk, uh, walkabout. Okay. But uh, yeah, that would be, um, yeah, that's your main task in the next uh, uh, week or so is to watch one of those films, at least one of those films. Any questions? All right, that's it, folks. You are free to go and I will see you on Thursday. I'll stick around if you do have questions. You want to talk to me one on one? Yep. Thank you too, Danny. Have a good one. You too, Lane. You folks have questions? Haley, Josiah? Okay, thanks, Josiah.